Progressive enhancement is a design principle for web pages that focuses on core content first. So it's like function first and flare second. Mm -hmm. Is CSS the awkward factor in this when you're thinking, first of all, function, and then you're factoring in style? Yeah, it's quite difficult because even when people think about progressive enhancement, they tend to just only focus on JavaScript, for example. But CSS is quite difficult to work with. That's like, it's quite famously. <laughs> but, um, and things can get really complicated when you're starting to deal with, oh, does a browser support this? Does a browser support that? So yeah, CSS is quite awkward in dealing with progressive enhancements, but I guess that's what I'll be covering in my talk. How to overcome it. Yeah. Um, so can you build a good web page using progressive enhancement technique, but still provide good visuals? Is it possible, even though the focus is on functionality? Can you marry them? Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's what people sometimes think that maybe if you're trying to create a site that will work in browsers that aren't the latest, that you're going to have to sacrifice on design. And to some extent, that could be true. Like you can't do the latest and greatest stuff like all the time when yeah. you're trying to make things functional. But it's about finding a balance and you can definitely make really great designs using progressive enhancement techniques. But like I said, it's about just figuring out what works for your particular user base. So if your user base is all like tech people, then maybe you can create like the most cutting edge design. <laughs> but if you're going for something more broad, then you're going to have to like consider what's more important, whether it's having like the craziest design or having something that's more functional, but still beautiful. What's the biggest challenge with progressive enhancement? Um, the biggest challenge is probably with CSS in particular, it's all the testing in different browsers and trying to, and knowing exactly which browsers you need to support and what each of them will actually support. So you have to be on can I use .com like all the time searching <laughs> as you're writing like each line being like, is this actually supported? And also, like I said, figuring out which browsers you want to support because at the at some point, you're going to have to draw a line and say, OK, this is where my user base is. So just kind of defining all of that and then working with it while you're developing, it can get quite complicated. So that's probably the hardest part. <laughs> yeah. Um, I noticed as well when I was just doing some research, you have a really cool blog. So I don't know if you want oh, to thanks. mention that for the video, because you, I mean, yeah. you've got some really cool articles like, mm -hmm. OK, I'm offline. And I love the one at, at the beginning where you say, you know, what do you think of this image? And it's a broken image and you've captioned oh, yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So everyone go visit my blog, <laughs> plugging my own self. <laughs> so it's called Bits of Code. And I started it about two years ago, almost two years now, actually. And I was just trying to write weekly articles. Also, like as a challenge to myself to learn more, but also to get better at explaining things to other people. So I just do anything to do with like HTML, CSS, JavaScript. And yeah, the article you're talking about was about broken Im images. So how to kind of deal with them, because obviously when an image breaks, it kind of just, it's not a really pleasant experience. So one of the things I was writing about was how to kind of just change that from a really horrible user like design or user experience to something that is more informative and helpful to the user. Thank you very much. You're welcome.